My friend and I promoted an event called Money in the Stake. WWE was going to be in Phoenix that weekend for the Royal Rumble plus NXT. I figured a nice parody name on Money in the Bank would probably draw a lot of attention. We featured some of the luminaries of today's wrestling like Diamante, Effie, and we set this up as a 21 and over event. And at the time, probably the best guy you could book for something like that was Joey Ryan. Now obviously, serious sexual assault allegations have been waged against Joey Ryan since then, and he's removed himself from the wrestling community, but you'll see him in this video. So this is the director's cut, a retrospective of a random indie wrestling event that happened after NXT and a rundown bar parking lot on the west side of Phoenix. I hope you enjoy. Our main event, and now his arm's in the sling. That's gonna be a tough one. We just didn't know how we were gonna work that if he was gonna be unable to compete. shows Kurt gave me the idea to run with the event and call it Money in the Stank. Uh, the name Money in the Stank obviously is a play on Money in the Bank, the popular uh, WWE pay-per-view. Kurt gave me the idea to have it at Ringside Bar and Grill, which was a good idea. And because there's beer, there's beautiful women. Money in the Stank featuring Joey Ryan. Come watch him in action January 20th. Fuck, I keep forgetting Saturday. Hey guys, come come join. Fuck. Okay. Just keep rolling, I can cut it. Hey guys, come join me at ringside. I thought we had a really good shot with the, the way we marketed this event. Uh, we did it for babes, brawls, and brews. That was the, the tagline that we did on Facebook uh, ads. Hey guys, come see me at Ringside Pub and Grill, sponsored by Elite Wrestling Entertainment. Money in the Sting featuring Joey Ryan. Come watch him in action Saturday, January 26th. Hope to see you there! The energy was fucking fantastic. My goal was to have Joey Ryan face Val Venus. You'd have the, the poster boy for sleaze during the Attitude Era, Val Venus, going up against King of Dong style, today's sleaziest wrestler, Joey Ryan. Maybe he didn't want to like wrestle Joey Ryan because of his, uh, his act, maybe. <laughs> or maybe he didn't want to like touch his dick. <laughs> you know, Joey was injured right before this. You guys might be wondering, why my arm is in a sling here. I don't know about Dominic, man, but when I, when I saw that he got injured, man, my, my stomach dropped. So yeah, it's a, it looks real bad. Because I was like, what the hell are we gonna do? I mean, he's our main event, and now his arm's in a sling, and we definitely still wanted to use Joey, but we just didn't know how we were gonna work that if he was gonna be unable to compete. I had the idea of him wrestling David Arquette. If Joey Ryan was, you know, injured, and we had David Orkid. I think, I think the match would be, to my standards, okay. It looked like he was mounting an actual wrestling career, but it turns out he's just filming a documentary, I guess. That's what we heard from some of the bookers on the East Coast. So David Arquette was out. Then we were gonna have Joey go against Thunder Rosa. First, I uh, wanted to get your thoughts on the first moment for Rumble to part, part in WWE. I just watched the highlights, bro. Oh, you did? Oh. <laughs> what was I doing? I think I was, at a, I was actually at a show. You were at a show? Yeah, I was at a show. And Houston, I was just coming from another first time ever uh, women's show in Delaware. And uh, I mean, I'm really proud because it's like finally mainstream. It's coming to mainstream. I mean, it's something that it's been, it's been done in the Indies. So I think, um, I personally think that because it's mainstream, everybody's like, oh my God, it's so amazing. But this has yeah. been happening for years. We had her booked, but she had, you know, other obligations, which is understandable. 
you know. So we had to figure out something else. And I think the main event that we did deliver, the intergender tag team match, was just as great as any of those matches would have been. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking a lot of people are not going to show up. negative things being said online from other people that are involved in promoting wrestling out here in Phoenix saying why would you do this on the same night as NXT granted it was right after NXT I just knew that people would be so pumped from that event down at NXT that they would not want to just go back to their hotel room or jump on their smartphone they wanted to see money in the stink and we gave them I think in my opinion the best event outside of the world wrestling entertainment that was put on that weekend we just couldn't match what we did and the crowd had such energy, they, they were into it. They were there for a reason. They wanted to see wrestling the way they love it. Money in the stake, four way, Phoenix street fight. Punching, kicking, in the nuts, kicking in the tank. All right, King, this is it, January 26th. We're gonna march into Phoenix for your EWE debut. So let's get in there and dispose those hoes. <laughs> Get him, King. <laughs> Go ahead and get your tickets now because I don't know when I'm coming back to Arizona. We never know when our lives may align again. And as for my opponent, Josh Carey, if you're unfamiliar with what Effie brings to the table, get your ass in gear because I am bringing the money, I am bringing the stank. F.A., man. F.A. brought something that I've never seen before. I, I didn't know a lot about F.A. going into this match and... Uh, you know, I kind of expected a little, little bit of a send up to Gold Dust, but uh, Fa man, he's just he's a little bit of everything, you know, because he comes out there and he's got kind of the uh, provocative, uh, what is it, controversial character, you know, kind of like Dustin Rhodes did under Gold Dust, but uh, he can also go, man. Fa doesn't play around. He's a big guy, man, and he was out there throwing Josh Carey around a little bit and getting off some good moves, and uh, I think he's a big fan of Hulk Hogan, too. He is a stable guy! I want to stable this to some dude's asshole! Diamond Cutter do a lot, a lot of hardcore matches. I was not expecting that out of Neil Cutter. When I was doing the graphics for this show, it's not that I didn't think Neil would do a good job or anything. It's just he exceeded my expectations so much, man. I mean, just just the way he was out there. And he, Neil is not a super huge guy. He's not super big, but man, he was kicking ass out there, man. And he really shined through in that, that four-way match. He really brought it, man. Out there wrestling in the trailer, and I seen Hal Cohen's dad, man. He was a little bit scared when uh, when when Cutter was out there in that trailer, man. He, he definitely was worried about his uh, his mode of transportation, but Cutter, man, he did a great job. That match was fucking awesome. No, I Diamante, she's from LAX. She's an Impact a wrestling star, and uh, yeah. 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 she's gonna do it. She's gonna do it. She's gonna do it. Yeah. She's tough, man. She's a luchadora. She's known all over the world, man. And, you know, she's got a big prominence down there in the AAA promotion in Mexico. And uh, to have her on our card, man, was definitely a pleasure. You know, women wrestling is getting really big. And, you know, we couldn't have Thunder Rosa, but I think we, we met her equal with Zafiro.
I was happy uh, about the success for my stay.